What's up, everybody? My name's Adam Glick. Follow me on my cooking adventures outdoors over a campfire. Join me on the ultimate Kentucky experience, connecting with locals and eating my way around the bluegrass state. So it's a new day out here in Kentucky and I'm heading toward Louisville. Just outside of Louisville, there's a little place called Ashburn Farms. And as it would turn out, it's not so little at all. This place is huge, gigantic farm. Pretty much anything you could do outdoors, you can do right here. Ashburn Farms offers open space for various types of hunting, but also plays host to large corporate events and weddings. I'm thinking we'll shoot some clays as if we're training for quail hunting. And a little bit later, we'll cook up some deep fried quail and waffles. How's it going, man? Nice to meet you. My right. name's Adam. Bill Thompson. Nice to meet Pleasure you. Pleasure to meet you, Bill. This is a beautiful property you guys have out here. Yeah, we love it too, and uh, we're proud of what we've done here. We'll let you shoot a few clays, and uh, this will help you get tuned up. When you call pull, I'll send both clays at the same time. I'm not sure I'll be able to do that. All right, let's do this. Pull. Pull. There you go. Shooting those shotguns sure was a good time. Yeah, it was. Hey, let's go see what else this farm's doing. So out here at Ashburn Farms, quail is everywhere. What I'm gonna do, like chicken and waffles, I'm gonna do quail and waffles. To start this recipe off, I'm gonna use about a half gallon of buttermilk. I'm gonna go ahead and drop these beautiful quail directly into the buttermilk. I'm gonna let these soak in the refrigerator for about 25, 30 minutes. The lactic acids have broken down the proteins, tenderized the meat, and provided me with a liquidous surface that's gonna stick to my flour. I'm gonna add Cajun spice. It's really gonna come out and give that quail that sort of southern flair that we're looking for. You want enough to be able to see it in every bite. Every good chicken and waffles has maple syrup or some kind of gravy poured on top. In this case, I'm gonna use both, maple gravy. Ooh, let's start it off with some bacon. Render out your bacon fat completely for the gravy. Once you have plenty of fat down at the bottom, add some diced onions. Cook those diced onions all the way down, add flour. That's gonna soak up the oil. Now all you have to do is put in a little bit of milk. I'm gonna add salt and pepper and finish it off with a little bit of maple syrup and you've got maple bacon gravy. I'm gonna place anything that I've just deep fried on top of paper towels. It helps absorb that residual fat and keeps them from getting soggy. Place them on top of some waffles and pour that delicious gravy right across the top. This is as good as Southern cuisine gets. So we had an amazing day at Ashburn Farms today. It's time to hit the road and see what Boone Creek Outdoors has in store for us. So I'm out here at Boone Creek Outdoors, just outside of Lexington, Kentucky. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of fly fishing later, but first I wanted to see what other activities they have available. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm talking about. Woo! <laughs> Pretty cool hanging out and doing a little zip lining out here through the canopies of Kentucky. It's gorgeous. Look at this one. It's going to go directly underneath the tree line. I think it'll be a fun ride. <laughs> Woo! Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Pretty good. My name's Adam. Rob Worthing. Pleasure to meet you, Rob. Nice to meet you. What do we have going on here? Well, we're going to be doing some Tenkara fishing today. Tenkara? Yeah, Very Tenkara cool. is a uh, traditional Japanese form of fly fishing. Um, there's no reel involved, 
Very cool. So this was made for trout. It was, yeah. Very cool. And are there trout in this river right now? There are. We've got rainbow and brown trout in here. Now this is a 13-foot rod. Look how thin that is across the top. That's incredible. Yeah. The big advantage in my mind to this kind of fishing is the fact that you can fish such a lightweight rig. Because your rig is so lightweight, you can actually hold it off the water the whole time. You can hit a pocket, keep your fly there, not worry about cross currents and get the perfect presentation. Not to mention, how easily do you travel with these things? One of the reasons I got into it was because I'm a, I love ultralight backpacking. You're not even packing a reel. No, no. That's Entire amazing. kit backpacking, uh, all total, was about four ounces. Use a little bit more of your arm instead of all wrist. Yep, okay. So keep kind of the wrist locked. You can even like keep that locked against your forearm. Gotcha. And don't be afraid to give it a little bit of power. Yeah, there you go. Kentucky actually has more free-flowing water than any other state in the lower 48. It's some of the most biodiverse water in the nation. So, you know, we're surrounded by limestone, and that limestone seeps in all kinds of goodness into the soil and into the water. Oh, you had a bite. I felt like a bite. Yeah, you totally had a bite. That was actually a trout. Unfortunately, the conditions weren't prime. However, he has a backstock of beautiful rainbow trout. I'm gonna smoke some up and make a delicious dip. When you're smoking meats, particularly delicate fish like this, you don't want a flame. You just want a slow, what we call cold smoke. To do a cold smoke, I'm gonna have smoldering wood. I don't want an open flame at any time. By sealing it off, I trap all that smoke in. I'm effectively creating a smoker. I feel like some of the best recipes on the planet have the fewest ingredients, and this is definitely one of them. Cream cheese, red onion, fresh dill, and lemon. In addition, salt and pepper. All that's left is take that delicious smoked trout, toss it in this bowl, we'll give it a quick mix, and enjoy. Basically any protein releases its fats when it's fully cooked. That's what you're looking for right now. That's how I know it's finished. Perfect. I'm just gonna pull it right off the skin. You see I cooked it skin side down. Skin's coming right off. That's also a sign of it being fully cooked. You can't mess this up. Simply shred it directly into your bowl of cream cheese. And I want about equal parts of fish and cheese. Give it a little fold. You wanna grab from the bottom and lift over to the top. Isn't that nice? This is when it really helps for your cream cheese to be at room temperature. God, that looks good. Let's throw some fresh crackers on top and have a snack. Oh yeah, that's great. It's just a great little snack. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much for taking me out fly fishing. Hey, absolutely. Let's do it again sometime. We will. Cool.